Good afternoon. Everyone here today knows, and many of you, like Andre Agassi, know from firsthand experience that high performing charter schools struggle all too mightily to find facilities to seed new schools and expand existing ones. And when I say struggle, I mean all too often. Educators are called away from the work of pedagogy and instruction to the tasks of real estate brokering, construction, and interest rate arbitrage. To make matters more complex, outside of this hall, those struggles would come as a surprise to many pundits. Outside of the charter community, a common view is that the rapid growth of charter schools and high-performing charter schools, your success is proof positive that additional funding for facilities and space is not a top priority. But we know that a gaping need remains, and today we're taking what we hope will be a catalytic step to correct this inequity by providing $250 million of seed funding for the Building Equity Initiative to give charter schools easier access to less expensive capital so that they can work harder and faster to create and expand great schools. We will be incubating this initiative with our close partner, Civic Builders, based in New York. The goal is clear. By 2027, a decade from now, this initiative will help to add 250,000 high quality new seats across 17 cities in the country. It is, it is worth remembering that when charters began 25 years ago, the original thinkers and advocates gave great thought as to how charters could pay teachers and principals, and as to the freedoms that these educators would need in order to get school right. But we underestimated the complexities and expense of real estate transactions that are, of course, needed to find adequate classroom space at scale. Today, 25 years later, leaders of high-performing charters all too often faced a, face a host of obstacles in securing facilities that their counterparts in conventional public schools simply never confront. Too often, this draws attention and programmatic resource away from the classroom. And here's something we can all agree to. Educators should be able to properly devote teaching and learning budgets to teaching and learning. The Building Equ Equity Initiative seeks to level this playing field in obtaining, level the playing field for charter schools in obtaining capital so that they can do more and faster to start great schools. It will provide low interest loans to nonprofit charter school developers and to lenders and to local organizations who are developing city level plans to grow the supply of great schools. We recognize that this plan is just a beginning. These funds do not, cannot, and will not solve the whole problem. We are clear on what our ultimate goal is here, that all public schools should have equal access to public facilities and to public financing, that these schools and all schools should be financed through public dollars. Today, we're a long way from that reality, though. Nationally, about $2.3 billion is spent annually on charter school facilities. But just one in three states with charter schools provides facilities funding. About 80% of outlays for charter schools come from charter school bonds, which are concentrated, as we know, in a relatively small handful of states and districts. We also know that charter school bonds are often more expensive than they need to be. And here's something else that we can all agree on. It is time for commercial banks to modernize their thinking about how to assess risk and assign costs to monies lent to charter schools. We know that demand for new high quality seats continues to far outpace supply. We know that some 600,000 individual students sit on waiting lists. Under current conditions, 
project costs for charter school facilities will need to jump by more than 50% in the next three years. That's an increase of $1.4 billion annually. So public funding for charter school facilities has to increase geometrically in the next few years to even begin to meet surging demand. But this problem is not fully captured in these analytics. Behind these numbers is a heartbreaking story that many of you know all too well of educational inequality. Behind these numbers is the pain and loss of access for hundreds of thousands of families. Behind these numbers are the stories of countless veteran teachers and school leaders who all too often have to deliver the message to families on waiting lists that they need to wait one more year. Now that I've outlined a few things that this initiative will do, let me point out a few things that it will not do. First, this effort should not call off the campaign to make public space available to public charter schools. Quite the contrary. <laughs> Government must do its job to make space available and to remove the facilities bottleneck. Second, we don't see this fund again as a complete solution. This will not in any way supplant the growing networks of local intermediaries, developers, and CDFIs that are already working to help charters find the financing and facilities they need. In fact, we desperately need these organizations like LISC and IFF and Building Hope and the Pacific Charter School Development Corporation to work faster and to think bigger about what's possible, and we need more organizations like them. In the end, the facilities challenge must be met with a robust public-private partnership. We need federal and state policy to rise above politics to put children, families, and educators first. And philanthropy needs to do its part to stand up for visionary educators like the, one in this room, the ones in this room and the students they serve. In the months and years ahead, we think and hope that this new initiative can play a critical role in leveraging more affordable capital for charter facilities. We think it gets us closer to the day when high quality schools and school leaders finally enjoy parity and equal facilities access. So I know this goal is one we all share and one that we have long shared. Today we're a step closer to realizing that and let me close by thanking Jim and Alice Walton and the entire Walton family for their vision and generosity and their commitment to expanding educational opportunity. Thank you very much.